Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Scorpio. If Scorpio is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get... <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. And, uh... I'll have to go ahead and apologize before we even get started that I am yet again under the weather. <laughs> so let's uh, see how this goes. Okay, knock, knock, knock. Scorpio, let's see who is there. Okay. Huh. Looks like uh, these uh, tea leaves are a little bit scattered to the wind here. Okay. And if you've watched before, you know I like to kind of turn the, turn this and take a look a little further away so that I can Maybe check out the negative space, which is the white in between. Sometimes images start to emerge there. Hmm. And today's going to be one of those days, I think, where we do have kind of a negative. Um, well, it's not a negative space image, um, actually, but pulling this away, I can see an image that I wouldn't see as much up close. Okay, so I want to start right here in this formation. And it's it's rather large, okay? Um, it looks very much like a lighthouse to me, okay? So um, the lighthouse, we know um, in reality the purpose of a lighthouse is to um, guide boats away from the cliffs. They at, at night during storms, um, when there's a lot of fog, uh, a boat will know to stay however far away. I don't know exactly, <laughs> but uh, to stay away so um, they don't hit a little island or um, a, like a the side of a cliff or a, a shallow. Right. Okay. So. This is kind of a, a, we think of the guiding light, right? This is something to keep you safe, to keep you um, on course uh, in troubled waters or in that dark night of the soul, okay? So I feel that, and I really think because of how scattered this bowl is, there has been some... Uh, so, some varied feelings going on. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, I think that there's been probably a lot of energy, maybe scattered thoughts, um, ir uh, not irrational, but maybe not, you know, um, maybe impulsive. That's the word I'm looking for. Kind of impulsive, um, decision making going on. Okay. And I think that you're really looking for that kind of guiding light in your life to kind of get things reeled back in. Um, and this makes sense to me because I pulled this card today and this is the 10 of cups from the Thoth deck. Okay. And this is the card of satiety. Okay. And that means satiety is, uh, well, it's when your thirst is quenched or you're full, um, to be insatiable, right, is, uh, you know, almost to be like you are, there's an impossible void that just keeps wanting and wanting and wanting. And um, satiety is actually when you have filled that want, when you're hungry and you've eaten enough and and um, you are well and full um, and don't need to eat anymore, okay? Um, but with this card, it can also be kind of, um, 
it can be a kind of uh, like a beware, right? That you have this deep desire to find some kind of sanity and you are um, looking for it maybe in the wrong places, you're doing risky things, um, maybe you're making, like I said, impulsive decisions just so you can start to get that feeling of um, control or, um, you know, euphoria or um, the enjoyment of the hunt right? Looking for what you, what you want and what you need. Um, that kind of hunter gatherer, um, you know, instinct, uh, but also just being very indulgent, you know, overdoing. So there's a really fine line there. Um, and also if we are not under control of, our, the the underlying reasoning for our need to um, be fulfilled if there are old traumas if um, you know you have some kind of uh, de developmental issues from childhood um, traumas in your childhood neglect abandonment whatever it is um, it doesn't have to just be childhood. This could be in just really fundamental relationships that you've had um, or situations that have arisen throughout your life. Um, sometimes we, uh, you know, look for look for kind of um, something to ease our pains in other places. And I, for me, this card could be really a great card. Yeah, you've done hard work. You, um, you know, you've, you know, whatever, a good, a good metaphor is you've decided what meal you want. You've gone out, you've procured all the ingredients. You came home, you washed them, cleaned them, um, got them ready to cook. You, you know, followed the recipe, you cooked the meal, you sat down, you enjoyed the meal, you're full. And now you're just going to kind of relax in that state. Okay, that's like the ideal form of this card. Um, but often I think it rides kind of the fence of being, um, you know, over overindulging a bit. Okay, being reckless and... Um, and being swept away by these wants, desires, um, and... You know, sometimes it can even be like altered states of consciousness due to whatever you are partaking in. And I don't just mean um, substance use. Um, this could be, you know, um, physical relations with people, love, um, you know, um, shopping, whatever it is. And it doesn't also, it doesn't have to be like an addiction, but it could be something that you are kind of fixated on, transfixed by, and it becomes unhealthy. Okay. So the way that I'm looking at this card, or card, excuse me, the way that I'm looking at this, this bowl and this card together is that there's just been, um, you know, there's been some chaos, I do believe. Okay. And you, but you know yourself well enough to know that you get into these states, you go through these periods, um, and you're looking for kind of that lighthouse, that grounding thing that's going to help guide you home. Right. And I also see within this, this, uh, lighthouse, we have this person kind of, um, standing there, uh, reaching for it. And there's this wonderful movie that's so bizarre, but it's great. It's actually called The Lighthouse and it um and uh it's I think it's the guy that that directed The Witch. His name's like Eggers, I think. And um anyways, this it's a story of two men that work at a, a lighthouse and it's based on a a true story but they are kind of stuck out there together and they slowly kind of go um into a really altered state of psychosis together kind of a mutual psychosis I would say and um it it really kind of uh 
it really explores these different kinds of themes, but um, also not just this, a big part of it was they were both obsessed with basking in the light of this light, in, of the light in the lighthouse. And um, it was almost like, it remind me, right, reminded me of kind of this uh, idea of the Shekinah, and I think I'm saying that right, um, which is kind of the feminine, um, the feminine manifestation of uh, of a divine god force, right? Um, this is, you know, sometimes seen in like fire or. Um, uh, you know, the eternal flames kind of kept in temples. And um, anyways, basking in this beautiful light, it it was like being in the presence of like something divine almost. But there's like a madness and ecstasy um, that borders on complete self-destruction. And so... Um, it's, you know, it's a question of really your path as well, because, uh, you know, in some, in some practices, this is what we're looking for, right? This is the state, the state of pure devotion and ecstasy and becoming one with, um, a divine thing that can make you kind of lose your threads to humanity, to the ego, the, and so on. And, um, your identity, and personas and and all of that. Now, um, is it's not very practical to, for you to maintain a life this way. Okay, so um, I think that this also kind of has that double-sided thing. Is that um, sometimes we can seek this guidance of the light house or this this uh, you know um, false light. Uh, so adamantly that um, it becomes an obsession that could could potentially destroy um, our lives or ourselves or you know the ties that we have to the people around us or routines that kind of thing and I'm you know I pass no there's no value judgment about that from my on my end okay so I'm not talking about this in a way that um, I'm no, I'm not dismissive of this path at all. I think that for some people, it is the only way, right, for them. Um, for other people, uh, it's very, I think there's a lot of suffering in it, okay? Needless suffering as well. And so um, I feel that it's just this really, I get this impression, a very distinct impression of trying to... There's almost this feeling, and I want to, I'm not going to stay on this forever, I promise, but there's almost a feeling of this, in this, you can see this in this person kind of tugging at this, this part of the wall of the, of this formation, the, the lighthouse, okay? And it looks like they're pulling so far back, they're kind of, um, fall, you know, leaning backwards. And there's almost this feeling of getting far into it, but never going all the way. And there's almost a sense of, um, being let down, being like, uh, you know, only half believing, having trouble fully investing yourself, um, and also feeling, you know, neglected and abandoned by this like, uh, spiritual thing that you really want to achieve. Okay. And that can be kind of destabilizing for sure. And it can be so isolating, especially if, um, your behaviors have kind of spiraled out. So then you're kind of alienated from the people around you who are probably worried about how you have been behaving. But on top of that, um, you're not getting the kind of outcomes that you want from this internal work that has been done kind of haphazardly. And so um, it's like this double loneliness right? The internal and the external. And I want to talk about, I want to look around and see if there's just, you know, what maybe is going to be helpful 
to kind of process some of this because it feels to me like there is, um, that there's a certain amount of pain really going on here. And I, you know, I think that honestly, I think that, and I want to point out there's a K person. And I think this is a person with a K name or a descriptive um, word about them that's a K um, that is kind of involved in your regular life. Maybe somebody you work with, maybe it's like a friend or a family member who is basically like really down for you, really cares about you, checks in with you, and they're, you know, they're worried about you. And I feel like there's almost a sense of you being kind of annoyed by this, okay? Um, but I think that they genuinely do care about you. And so I would say try to take care with this person and also don't, um... You know, don't let your immediate reactions to how they're trying to connect with you um, kind of stonewall them or, you know, throw them out, okay? Because I think that this is a person that will stick with you. Um, and I don't think this is the first time this has gone on with you where you've, you know, maybe had a period of um, a little bit of... I don't know, even maybe distorted thinking or, um, you know, I mean, it could even be something as much as like a mental health crisis. Uh, and I want to stop and say that, um, I, you know, I'm not a professional, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor of any kind, I have no certifications. So I'm not qualified to give you any kind of medical advice, legal advice, um, or anything like that. But um, this is for entertainment, these videos are, these readings, but I also like to talk about things that are very real and um, happen to a lot of us, okay? And so they might be um, subjects that are sensitive. Um, I will not give you advice medically aside from go to your doctor um, if you don't have one. Um, you know, there are probably lots of resources in your area, hopefully, and, um, you know, seek professional help. I can't, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but I do want you to know that I hear you and I see you <laughs> and, um, you know, and, uh, I empathize. And the reason I talk about these difficult subjects is because I think it's so important to lose the stigma of, um, these kinds of things in life. They need to be talked about. Okay. Um, and especially with how the world has gone in these last few years, a lot of people have suffered and um, continue to suffer. And I think that it is, you know, our duty to be a community for each other. And so I, you know, I will talk about these things. And um, so anyways, this K person I think is looking out for you. Um, just, you know, I don't know, don't, I, it can be hard. Okay. And I also say this as somebody who deals with problem, my own, uh, mental health issues and has, I have addiction issues. So, um, thankfully I'm in recovery for almost 10 years, but, um, you know, uh, there are behaviors that I still have and I have to work on actively. And one of those things is when I am not feeling well mentally, um, especially when I'm like depressed or whatever, um, and somebody comes to me and says, I'm worried about you. I get very defensive. I really do. And, um, it's just, you know, something that has to be worked on. You don't have to answer them. You don't have to do anything for them, but you know, people care and, um, it's easy to have the instinct to just push them out of your life. Right. And, um, let's try not to do that, especially for the people who show up for us, you know, as, as long as they're not, um, you know, uh, being, overstepping in some way or, you know, obviously, um, adding to the actual problem. Okay. Um, and I wanted to look at this guy right here. This is a, uh, this looks like a beetle, a rhinoceros beetle. It has this beautiful long tusk here, or I don't know, a horn, I guess. <laughs> um, 
And I think that this really, uh, you know, aside from the imagery of like the dung beetle, the beetle, especially when they have the, when it's this rhinoceros or some kind of scarab, um, with kind of the ornate horns and such, um, such a power of sign or uh, such a power of strength. Okay, and the ability to maintain through struggle. And I think that you have strong ties to this very earthy energy. You're a person that can find your grounding um, pretty quickly. Okay, um, and I think that there's, you know, a lot of fire in you. Um, and there's definitely the elements of air because you get into these very kind of emotional and, um, you know, uh, highly th like thought centered places. So you let your internal dialogue sometimes rule you. But I also think that you very much have your feet on the ground. Okay. And now it's just a matter of getting back to that place, aligning your body, your mind, body, soul to that kind of grounding energy. So I think it's so important when you get to these periods where things kind of are getting scattered to the corners for you um and maybe you're falling out of your routines and you're not you know uh doing the things that are helpful for maintaining good mental health and good physical health and um you know, whatever that looks like for you. It's different for each and every one of us. But when you fall out of your routines of self-care, um, I think it's important that once you get that moment of clarity where you're like, okay, I got to get back on this. I need to figure out um, how am I going to pick up all these kind of pieces that have kind of spiraled out. It's best to start with the baby steps, right? The little things. So trying to um, clean up the area that you live in, right? Clean up your home. Clean, And if you if it's too much of a task to start out with, which I understand, believe me, um, just clean up your bedroom, okay? And then start working on the next place you spend the most time. Maybe it's the living room. Maybe it's the kitchen. Whatever it is, just pick up a little bit at a time, okay? Then we start doing things like hygiene, trying to make sure that you're taking care of yourself in that way. And then, you know, working outwards towards showing up for your job on time, doing what you say you're going to do, going on walks, doing exercise, moving your body, this kind of thing. And then also, you know, partaking in things that make you feel good and happy, but they're, you know, little, like uh, going for a walk, planting flowers, um, visiting friends and family, um, hobbies, that kind of thing. So we work ourselves back into this place of everything kind of coming back together in a manageable way. Throw away those big lofty goals, okay? That is, you know, sometimes when we have goals that are just, uh, you know, so far beyond what we can manage at that point, um, you know, we can put up, write them down, put them for later, okay? Long-term goals. But um, sometimes we set ourselves up for failure, right? And we have to be very mindful of um, trying to, uh, just manage the little stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let me get this clear to everybody who's listening. There's nothing wrong when we're struggling and we have to just focus on um, surviving and, um, you know, taking care of the things one click above basic survival. Okay. So, you know, our pets, keeping our house clean, that kind of thing. Um, that's one click above just eating, sleeping, getting up and, you know, whatever, moving your body enough that you don't totally atrophy. So, um, I think that, you know, with this beetle, it really just, like I said, it just makes me know that you really are a person that can get back to a place where you're more grounded. Okay. Now let's see. 
I see this also, and I think I really am getting this vibe. This looks like a little house to me. <clears throat> and I'm getting a big vibe here that the, the biggest thing that makes you really kind of click back into reality is when your home life is kind of out of you know, out of sorts. And if you live alone, it's like how messy your house is getting. Or, you know, if you have a family, maybe there's a lot of like kind of uh, miscommunication happening, um, bits of annoyance being, you know, just not being able to kind of dwell in the same rooms for very long. There's just kind of a vibe of like mis misalignment, right? And I think that that's where you're starting to really um, realize like, okay, you know, things have gotten a little bit, um, a little bit out of hand, a little bit wonky for me right now. And I need to kind of um, you know, reel it in. Okay. Um, I'm seeing here this person underneath this moon, this kind of crescent here. I think that there is a person in your life that has really strong lunar energy. Um, I think that they're probably a very magical person, probably very intuitive, um, very intuitive and, uh, probably just it, their mind is less in, you know, the norm. They're not necessarily talking about pop culture and stuff. They're talking about, you know, I don't know, philosophy, magic, um, mythologies, whatever it is. They seem like kind of an ancient person in the wrong time or something like that. Um, but I think that they also probably have more of um, a subtly kind of depressive quality to them, maybe a little bit melancholy. But I think that this person really helps offset some of these bigger um, uh, energies that you have of that are almost kind of hypomanic or maybe just pure manic sometimes. And I think that when you spend some time with this person, it helps you get into that really grounded place that I know comes so naturally to you. So I would suggest that you kind of really, um, make the effort to commune with this person. Okay. And if you can share how you've been feeling, be open, vulnerable, honest with them. I think that they, um, seem like somebody who is there to also help you. And I, f I have this strong feeling you have maybe not a ton of people in your life. You feel very connected to, and maybe there are, um, maybe there are a lot of people that you know, like on an acquaintance level or kind of, you know, friend in passing, whatever. But um, I think that there are a, a maybe three or four people who you are very connected with. And um, maybe sometimes you don't maintain communication or contact with them. But um, I think when you're going through periods like this, as you are coming down from those kind of higher places of energy and starting to settle down. Um, I think it's really important for you to at least connect with one or two of these people because they will help you remember parts of yourself that, um, are more grounded, but kind of, I think almost what you consider as being more of your authentic self. Okay. And, um, I think that that's super important. The other thing I have is, this person that looks kind of like a mermaid with their arms up and their hair's kind of like in disarray. Um, and then there's another kind of person here. And I think that, and usually I don't necessarily connect the mermaids to uh, the siren or the siren or whatever. Um, but I think in this case, it almost seems like you have one or two or three possibly people who you maybe have been hanging out with or they've been in your close orbit who just kind of have this really chaotic energy and they just seem like types of people that just don't um, care who they take down with them. Okay, and so um, I think it's almost this kind of real, uh, I don't want to say dark, but just like they don't take care with other people's well-being or their, their own probably. And so um, 
kind of this feeling of like misery loves company. And I think that because they've been giving you a lot of attention and you kind of almost feel seen because they they relate to this kind of destructive um, sphere that you kind of dwell in sometimes. And when you get into that place, you feel almost, it seems like you can get kind of contrary, kind of, um, well, like I said, destructive, um, maybe a little mean spirited. But I think that when you're like at the beginning of these stages, you feel like, oh, this is me. This is, I, you know, I almost like get the sense of like a teenager who's just, you know, um, really into a subculture that's like all about like, you know, just kind of going, going against their parents and all of the like minor authorities in their life. Right. Um, and I feel like you're probably older than that now. So when you get around somebody who kind of like matches this energy while you're in this place, it's like you almost feel like this is who I, this is who I truly, truly, truly am um, beyond all this kind of, um, you know, adult stuff that I do, this settled life that I've kind of created for myself is not me. I, you know, I feel suffocated by all of that. And so you get into these periods where you just kind of like are smashing the place up, right? Not that, not necessarily literally, but kind of burning bridges and, you know, maybe even losing a job or two. And, um, you have these people who are calling you to hang out or, you know, whatever every single day. And it makes you feel like you are being heard and seen and, and they care for you. Um, they like you, they want to be around you, but really these are people who just, um, they like to, you know, be around other people who are miserable. And, um, you know, once you kind of start to lift yourself out of that, that, that vibe, they're really not going to stick around. So I think it's important for you to be prepared for that, but also really, really think about setting some boundaries for yourself and for them. Okay. In your life. And please, you know, like don't let them into too far into your, um, financial life or, you know, family life or anything like that. I think it's important to be really, um, discerning about who you let around in your temple, in your home, around your people and all of that. Okay. Um, I'm also seeing, and of course we would, right? We have this beautiful scorpion for Scorpio. And I think this also just tells me, you know, you are, you are so much yourself. You are so much yourself. You're so many different things, but you are truly an authentic being. And you are, you, as you've gotten older, as you've kind of refined some of the parts of yourself, you've worked on some of the hurts from your childhood, your past, you've probably done some shadow work. I, I get the feeling that, um, you're not, afraid of your shadow. You're very familiar with that shadow and you have begun the process of integrating that, those parts of yourself, right? Um, you, it overtakes you less and less these days. Okay. So I think that, um, you're really coming into your power and I feel that, um, you are very, you know, it's much easier for you to become aware of where you're at, of your state, okay, and kind of snap out of it and um, do the work to get things kind of put back together. And that's so important. That's a wonderful thing. Um, I just want to look at, this is getting dry. So I have so many, there's so many symbols in here. Um, we have, I have reoccurring V's in here. So I'm thinking that there's a V person, um, or a word with a V. I think that this is maybe like a synchronicity or, um, something like that you are experiencing. So look out for the V and I want to look at, I want to look at this heart here. There's a little heart. It's kind of distorted. Then I want to look at, there's a little heart on here as well. 
and let's see if we can kind of, there we go, the little heart there. And um, I think that's very much related to the, also this like kind of a dragon. It's like in the mental area up here in the spiritual area as well. And I have a feeling that if you are not in a relationship, you have like an ongoing on and off again relationship. If you are in a relationship, this is somebody who really loves you, cares about you. But oh my gosh, do you really get them PO'd, right? You um, just, whatever it is that <laughs> you do sometimes, um, they just really can breathe fire. But it's not coming from a p place of um, just meanness or, um, you know, they're not just like a, like a, like a terrible person or anything. I think that they just really get frustrated because they love and care about you so much. They don't know how to deal with some of these situations. Okay. Um, I almost kind of wonder if there's been some infidelities, small scale, large scale, long-term affairs. I don't know, but, um, I feel like they, you know, are really, really sensitive to, the way that you behave when you kind of spiral out a little bit, okay? And sometimes I think, like we talked about, really looking for um, things to kind of fill those like voids that we carry around with us. Um, it's not uncommon for people to, um, you know, kind of have like small love addictions or, or physical addictions, right? And so um, sometimes I think that can be hurtful for this person. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be like a love thing or whatever. It could be that you did something that you told them you wouldn't do anymore. Maybe gambling or, you know, I don't know, buying something on QVC, whatever it is, you know, it could be a lot of different things. But I think that, you know, you need to just give them time to cool off for sure. Okay. Um, and then this heart also, I think it's, also looks like a little rooster. So I feel like this person is also helping you with this wake up call that you have been, you know, has been coming, coming and um, you're really like starting to wake up in the situation that you've been in. And I don't know how long it's been going on. But I think that, you know, like I said, you're getting older. And I think that you um, awaken to the kind of chaos that you've been in a lot easier. Okay. Um, I think in the next, you know, you have some choices to make here um, and you have some cleaning up to do. I think in the next, you know, f four or five weeks, that's going to be really important for you. Um, making those decisions, sticking with them. I think that if you kind of don't stick to the stick to the course um, of getting stuff kind of cleaned up, um, you know, maybe if you have a counselor or therapist or some kind of mentorship, sponsor, whatever it is, um, somebody, maybe um, somebody within your church or uh, a peer that you can speak to that, you know, like we had talked about, like that lunar energy person, somebody um, that you can be very honest and vulnerable with. Um, I think that's going to be so important and it's going to help you stick to this kind of um, getting back on, on course. Okay. Um, but if you don't, you know, I mean, I can't say what's going to happen exactly, but I do know that, um, you know, when we begin to spiral and we stay in that, I mean, gosh, you could stay in that for years, but <sighs> the devastation can be immense. Okay. And, um, I will say that you will never find that, that complete fulfillment, right? There's, um, these, uh, lots of periods of um, like a temporary sense of perfection, but it goes away so quickly, right? It just, um, and it, and it takes more and more to get there and things just get so out of hand. We can leave our lives in wreckage if we don't really try to, um, you know, abide our healing. And, um, and so I'm going to take a little drink here. My throat's getting bad. <laughs> and so that's my message for you, Scorpio. Um, I just want to say, you know, I'm very proud of you. Um, if this is 
if you resonate with this at all, um, I think that, you know, you are looking for reasons to get things under control and I congratulate you for that. That is a big step. Okay. Um, it doesn't all come easily. It takes, you know, one, one day at a time. And that's how I live my life, right? <laughs> Sometimes one moment at a time. And um, like I said, those baby steps, okay? Doing the little things first. And they they sound like little things, but they're not. They're so big sometimes. You know, I have totally been in places where I could barely get out of bed. I could barely take a shower. I had to cut my hair because um, it was long and it was getting knots in it and I couldn't even muster the strength and attention and will to wash it as often as I needed to and to brush it. And, you know, it just, I was in such a deep state of grieving. I had lost so much in my life and, um, it took, it took baby steps to get back to, to having, my life together and it took you know sometimes it takes years for me it took some years you know and um and and every day I remind myself that you know we could I could get right back in that place if I'm not careful so um we stay aware we stay vigilant and um you know and and be kind kind to ourselves right we have to be so kind, have that, that great, it's easier to have empathy for others than to, for ourselves, but we must have empathy for ourselves. Okay, Scorpio, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would be so kind, like the video, it helps me get into the algorithm. If you have not um, subscribed to the channel, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell and um, that will let you know when more videos are coming out. Uh, other than that, please leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Um, I love hearing from each and every one of you. I have um, great love for all of all of my peoples and <laughs> and um, you know, old or new. So uh, you know, yeah. And um, oh yeah, if you are interested in a private reading, there are instructions about how to book one of those. I've had um, a lot of fun doing them here in the past. And um, yeah, I look forward to doing more of them. Okay, thank you, Scorpio. We will speak again soon.